Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array. Transitions. They're a really effective way to make your video feel a lot more cohesive and professional. And if you're watching this video, I'm pretty sure you've been exposed to a lot of transition packs and tutorials on how to get those awesome, totally cool transitions. But today, we're gonna be showing you how to create four super simple transitions right inside of Premiere Pro. These are so simple that maybe you'll start to incorporate them into your regular workflow. And we're gonna avoid transitions that have gotten a lot of love, maybe too much love from the internet. So, no zoom blurs. Hopefully you haven't seen all of these before, so let's dive right into it with number one, the card whip. This one you might have seen in some of our other tutorials in the past here at Motion Array. It's just like treating your footage like a set of stacked cards. And when you wanna move on to the next one, so once you've got your footage down on the timeline, place your first clip on the second layer and your second clip on the first layer, like a descending staircase. Next, overlap them slightly. And on your top clip, drop on the transform effect from your effects panel. Once it's here, find where you want the transition to happen and keyframe your position at the start of the transition. Now move to where you want the transition to finish and keyframe the position to have your footage completely off screen. You'll probably only need a few frames to make this look right. Make sure that at all times between these two keyframes, there's a piece of footage overlapping underneath this top clip. Then click this drop down and activate the graph for your motion and keyframe it to start slow and then ramp up to a faster speed. Right now it should look like this, but there's one more thing. Uncheck the use composition shutter angle and then key in the manual shutter angle of 180. Now your motion should have some more realistic blur to it based on the movement and direction that you gave it. Once you've done that, just add a nice whooshing sound effect and the transition is complete. Number two, the stutter. This particular transition works really well for high energy, intense videos. Anywhere from the horror genre all the way up to concert footage. To get this stutter effect is way easier than you might think. All you have to do is overlap your footage like we showed you in the previous example. And then at the point where you wanna make your footage start to stutter, make a cut. Now progress forward and make cuts for every individual frame along the way. Now all you have to do is remove every other frame so that there's one frame missing for every one frame present. And you're left with something more like this. And if you choose a good time during your music to use this effect, it can really amplify its impact. We're only at transition number two, but just a reminder that if you're looking for some more advanced transitions to use in your videos, we've got an insane number of different transitions for different styles, genres, and use cases over at motionarray.com. Feel free to check it out. And for those of you here on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to never miss a future video. Number three, the jitter. This transition is less of a physical transition from one clip to the next and more like a mental preparation. Instead of revealing the new clip in a unique way, it actually prepares your mind to be ready for the new clip to be shown. To pull off this transition, what you wanna do is prep your clips the same way that we did for our last transition. Have an overlap at the point where you want the transition to start. Make a cut, and from here, you're gonna do the same thing by making cuts at each frame of the overlap that you want to utilize. You're then gonna go through each frame and input a unique position and scale value so that they're all slightly different. You'll likely wanna zoom in your clips a very small amount, and then when you move them slightly, either in the vertical or horizontal position, they won't show a black background. Make sure that for each of your different clip sections, you're keying in a different set of values so that if you go back and forth between the previous frame and the new one, you'll notice a small jitter. Keep doing this for all of your different clips in succession, making larger changes if you want a more exaggerated effect and making smaller changes if you want the effect to be more subtle. From here, this is what your effect should look like. But if you wanna add some more flair to it, you can move all of these frames here that you've changed the position for and extend the original clip beneath them. Then decrease the opacity for each of these individual frames up here. This will give you a bit more of a ghosting type effect, which depending on the style that you're going for, might take this effect to the next level. And finally, number four, the slice. This final transition is a little bit more complex, but it can give you a really nice look. The key here is like our other two shots, where we have our first shot placed over top of the second one, like a descending staircase. Then at the point where you wanna make the slice transition begin, let's make the cut. 
and duplicate this final piece here so that it's stacked on top of itself. You can easily duplicate it by holding Alt or Option and then clicking or dragging the clip up. Next up, search for the crop effect and drag and drop it onto each of these two clips. On the top clip, set a crop amount to be 50% from the bottom. By isolating this layer, we can see that what this does is leave the top half of the clip in place while removing the bottom half. So let's do the opposite for the duplicate clip below. For the crop effect, set the top amount to 50%, and this will leave the bottom half alone. So now what you have is a clip where you can't see anything is different, but it's prepared to be separated by its two halves. So now we can set a position keyframe where we want these clips to start separating, and then make a second keyframe and set it to be just off screen. Then by using these back and forward icons for our keyframe, we can bring the playhead back to exactly the same location to make matching but opposite keyframes for our bottom clip. So now we have a linear separation, but I want to make it a little bit more dynamic. Bring up the position keyframes and drop it down here so that you get your small graph options. Drag down your keyframe handle here so that it starts slower and then pull it all the way out so that it ramps up in an exponential amount. Your goal is to make an upwards ramp like this, so that it starts slow and accelerates to its fastest point when it leaves the screen. Do the same thing for your bottom clip and you have your slice transition. By adding a directional blur and keyframing it to match the motion of your clips, you can make this effect feel a lot more realistic. But with this baseline, you don't just have to use it like this. You can also push them in from opposite directions or prepare the motion with some graphical elements to make it a little bit more unique. And guys, that's been four simple transitions you can pull off with no downloads or plugins right inside of Premiere Pro. But like I mentioned, if you wanna take your transitions to the next level, we have tons of transitions for you to check out here at motionarray.com. We also have a ton of Premiere Pro plugin transitions that you can download at no additional cost to an existing paid Motion Array membership. And finally, if more learning is your cup of tea, we've also got loads of other tutorials for Premiere Pro and After Effects. Feel free to check those out too. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.